Are you ready to do the work? Let's go ahead and get this person in because he keeps popping in. So he must have something you really want to talk about. Hello? Yes. You've been trying to get on. Hey. Yes. So uh, my question more so is like. First off, introduce yourself. First off, introduce yourself. Tell me how old you are and where you're calling from. Okay, sir. So my name is Joseph. I'm from um, Virginia Beach. Went to school in DC. Um, graduated last year. And how old are you? Twenty-four. Okay. And so, just to kind of go into it, so I believe my I've been working on my soft skills, kind of trying to develop them a little bit better. Um, I've been in corporate environments, but in terms of I'm kind of transitioning to a, a new job, so. Um, I've, I've been finding that different like soft skills are more accepted or have to be more like worked on at different jobs kind of um, and just in I don't order understand to what you, okay. get a better you're 24 years old you say you've been working on your soft skills okay I'm going to tell you they need yeah. much more work okay um, because, I mean I'm just going to be honest because you've been trying to get on which is cool but the first thing you do okay. when you get into a place you need to introduce yourself okay I mean, I, 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 when I told you to introduce yourself, see, a lot of times you young guys think the world knows you. You got you mute the YouTube channel and stuff in the background. Get off Bluetooth, get off speakerphone. Now, you say you've been working on your soft skills, right? Yes. Uh, did you graduate from college? Yes? Yes. What, what's your degree in? Economics. Okay. How have you been working your soft skills? Uh, just, I've been utilizing like LinkedIn learning. I'm trying to go out and just talk okay, to people. Okay, so more. you have not hired um, a coach? No. Okay. Um, why? Just be honest. I'm cheap. Yes. I'm cheap. Yeah, I guess. I'm cheap. Say that. I mean, you, do you want to pay for a coach? I'm willing to. No, I mean, no, 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 no. I said, do you want to? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. when I talk to guys who are people who are in college, see, college is an expense, and you're willing to put that expense to because you think the outcome is going to be there. You're going to make more money, have a better job, so you're willing to pay for that. So you're willing to pay for that learning for a different outcome. But this you have not paid for. You're trying to do it the free way. And it's not working. How are you supposed to get better with soft skills with inanimate objects like books and videos? That makes sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So makes where sense. do you work? I'm a, I work for the I'm a federal contractor. Okay. So are you in an are you in an office with a lot of people? Yes. How many about how many yep. people? Probably 100, 100. 150. So and probably half of those people are women. Yes. All right. Probably a little bit more. So if I if I asked some of the women in the office uh uh about you uh or if I asked people in the office about you, would they know you? Would they say nice things about you? Yeah, I think so. I would say so. Well, I mean, let me rephrase that question. If I said off the record, would they say nice things about you? Tell me off the record yes. what kind of guy this guy is. So my suggestion, number one, is going to be, number one, um, there's some basic conversational stuff that a lot of millennials and zennials don't get. Because you spend so much time online or on texting anything, um, even just our conversation is just choppy. There's no real, there's no real rhythm to it. So you're supposed to say something. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm listening. Just trying to soak it in. But but you're in the conversation. You gotta be yeah. present. Supposed to say something right okay. there too. <laughs> yeah, I mean I've been working on it um, right now. I'm just trying to kind of take in everything that you're saying, and to be honest with you, this not even trying to make an excuse, but just uh, 
How's your romantic conversing your on rela- the- conversing on the phone should be no different than, than in person. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes. I don't. Have you ever had a girlfriend? Yes. How long ago? About a year ago. Uh, how long did that last? Two years. Uh, were you guys sexually active? Yes. Okay. Twenty four years ago. Twenty four years old. You had a girlfriend about a year ago. Uh, do you have sex on a pretty regular basis after the relationship? Yes. Do you make that happen? I mean, I mean, you go out, you see a woman, she's attractive, you step to her, introduce yourself, get her number, chat her up, seduce her, take her out. What, yeah. Do you do that? Yes, I do. So I, I have no problem. Like I, I don't have a problem in that area. To be honest with you, my whole thing is. And this is what I've been trying to work on for the last few years, trying to convert those types of skills, those the soft skills needed for those types of things into specifically like the career and the workforce. And, uh, I'll tell you one thing um, you're going to need to work with a coach because I, I'll just take you at your word, but um, I'm not I'm not seeing the transition because generally guys who have who are sexually successful with women who actually can make that happen don't struggle to mm-hmm. talk to men. It's much harder, usually harder to talk to women than men. Uh, now I understand in a hookup culture, you guys can sex happens just be, but far more often these days women are making it happen. Um, if I had more time, I would ask more questions, and I'll be really shocked that if it's what it, it's what you're trying to say it is. But coaching, coaching is what it's going to take. Um, last couple of questions: How much are you making? Make sixty. What'd you say? Sixty. 60? 60K. 60,000? Yeah, 60K. Okay, okay, what are you doing with the phone, bro? Hello? It's going in and out. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm fine. Got full... Yeah, I make 60K. $60,000. Yeah. Um, yep. And what did you make last year? 50. What's that? What's the top end in your position? It's your, it's your job title. Um, I'm a financial analyst. Um, the top end would be more so like 75, I believe. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you this coaching interpersonal communications. I actually, let me go ahead and put my thing in the chat room. I do one-on-one interpersonal communication training. Uh, but I, I would say there's more to it than this. Um, communications, coaching, well, soft skills. It, it's just more than talking. It's more than speaking. There's a, Whatever you're doing with the phone, microphone, I don't know what's going on over there. Body language, eye contact, things like that. Because what I'm, I'll be honest with you, what I'm kind of getting from you, there's some stuff that's kind of missing here, but I can't really uh, go to it much here. I got other people. But yeah, man, coaching, especially if you're making $60,000 a year, you better do it now. Don't wait. And, stop, and let me, if nothing else, stop trying to do it for free. <laughs> so let me just be honest. Stop trying to do it for free. Free does not work. See, anytime you're on top or you're winning and you decide to slow down, there's usually because there's something coming ahead that you don't want to deal with. There's a curb coming up and you and your car does well straight, but you don't know how to corner. You can't drift. You can't do something. Well, my my the way I used to think back then, I'll wait. I'll figure it out. I'll analysis paralysis instead of speed into the corner. Learn, figure out. And one of the best things, my my one of my best friends today, he'll tell you. One of the best things I ever learned is to admit I don't know shit. One of the best things I ever learned through therapy is to admit I don't know a damn thing. I, you're good at this. I don't know how to do it. Teach me. Best practices. And, oh, and trying and failing. See, a powerful man understands it's a long-term game. And it's not, you don't get, you don't worry about falling, failing in front of people who don't necessarily matter to your in-term success. Yeah, you fall. People are going to laugh. Think about when I was a young boy and I was played the cornet. Fourth grade cornet. It was hell on my, on my family and my neighbors. I sounded horrible. But when I went from cornet to second chair, third chair cornet, second chair cornet, First chair cornet, then I graduated to trumpet, 
but I had to go back to third chair trumpet instead of first chair cornet. Yeah. Second chair trumpet, first chair trumpet, drum major, jazz band. There was a time about seven years, six years later, where my neighbors would come outside, pour a glass of wine, smoke their cigarettes, and wait to hear me play Dizzy Gillespie, Miles Davis, um, Herb Alpert. Just something. You have to have the patience to go through the pain. So a lot of us don't want to deal with the pain because we didn't learn how to deal with pain. This is where daddy not being there fucks up so many of us because we got all this testosterone and we don't know how to deal with pain in a masculine way. So we end up bitching out. We end up dealing with pain in a feminine way because we was raised by our mamas. They wasn't, and this is no shot at the mothers. But mothers cannot raise sons effectively to deal with male emotions. Emotions and testosterone are fucking dangerous. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a psychiatrist and I was like, this, you don't, anyway. Pain. Pain has a purpose. But incorrectly channeled through the feminine emotions in a masculine frame leads to chaos and destruction because all it takes is that one bad decision, one wrong move, one wrong step. And you can have life altering choices. This is why training is so important. Discipline is so important. Power is not a boy's game. It's a man's pursuit. Power in all things, power at all times, the game of power is something that men worldwide approve. We understand, and black men in particular, this is what we must start doing. Our women are in power. Understand something. Power doesn't power power only accedes to a demand. You want power? Power must be taken. It's not given. Our first thing in our community is we can talk about the bonnets and the slippers and all this other stuff until we actually are working together and take the power position in our own community. No other race of men has to take us seriously. So yeah, while we sit around and talk about Big Shirley Save and all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. One way to actually combat this stuff is become the group of men we need to be and we determine what's acceptable for them. And then they have a choice. If they want to be on our plan, if they want to be on our, they want to be on the winning team. They want to be where this is. They got to decide to do what? Drop the weight, check the attitude, put the bonnet up, put the, all the stuff we've been asking. Get power. Then you can start making demands. I don't expect black women to give us anything. They shouldn't. We have to take it. Because if we can't, every other group of men has to fight for power. You have to fight for power amongst them. Well, how are we going to fight on, on both sides? We got to fight to our women and the world? Yes. Now what? What you want me to tell you? No. Cry me a river. Fuck you. There's no crying in baseball. Oh, man, that's fucked up, man. Uh, the Monaghan Report. And, 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 and the civil rights movement, uh huh. Yep, you're right. You know me. I'm on your side, but we ain't had. I ain't never been nobody to tell me to get to the back of the bus. I've never really feared a lynching. I mean, come on, man. I am the number one advocate, but I'm more of an advocate for men taking power. And the first thing you must master is yourself. If you cannot master you, you can call yourself a high value man, an alpha male, a select guy. You can call yourself Rumpelstiltskin is all I care. But you can't lead nobody if they don't choose to follow you. You can pound your chest and say you alpha, 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 alpha. But if they're not following you, what are you going to do? Sign language them? Oh, you should follow me because I'm an alpha. Look at, look at how strong I am. Look at how deep my voice is. Look at, look at my beard. Look at my tattoos. Look at this. Look at that. No, 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 no. Alphas don't have to walk around saying I'm alpha. 
grandfather with a fourth grade education. You've all heard this before. If you got to say I'm a man in my own house, you've already lost. If you got to go ahead and tell people you're an alpha, huh, what? Power. Three male archetypes. And I'm opening up the call lines. Three male archetypes. And this is where I'm about to really go in the black male community. Stop being stupid. Three male archetypes, refined, rakish, and rogue. Refined, I fall into the refined category. Much more of a sophisticated gentleman. Martinis, that kind of stuff. Dan Draper, Don Draper, Mad Men, that's a refined kind of style personality. Rakish, think of Johnny Depp. Think of Johnny Depp. Think of actually uh, Tony Stark in Iron Man. Robert Downey's Tony Stark. He's much more of the rake. <clears throat> and then the rogue. The rogue, think Han Solo, Harrison Ford. Much more of a swashbuckling personality. Refined, rakish, and rogue. I've talked about this. Uh, and the more direct the more direct translation to the black community will be the pretty boy, the bad boy, and the roughneck. The pretty boy, the bad boy, and the roughneck. Problem is, in our community, we have made it to where only one style, per one only one personality, is considered to be above all the others. We've made it to where the rogue, well, well, the roughneck. We made it to where the roughneck is the only thing we'll accept. Because see, the bad boy can still have a suit on. The rogue doesn't wear a suit. We've made it to where we only accept we have a one-dimensional masculinity in the black community. This is why people continue to call a man like myself gay. When every other community, I'm just called a producer. The concept of calling a man gay because he actually cares about his appearance, is learned, and does the work day in and day out, we minimize it because you've been told that the only masculinity in the uh, the that's that's valid is the roughneck. And this is, um, I'm gonna say in Generation X, this is where we dropped the ball. We seeded the ground to gangster rap and hip hop. We went to college and X-Clan and Public Enemy were in. And we seeded the ground to this gangster rap, hip hop, the, thug the, the thugification of black America to where you got to be street or hood to be a man, except that don't run no biz. That doesn't run any businesses. The rogues of any group doesn't build like the bad boy, the pretty boy. The rogue of any group does not build like the refined and the rake. Now, why is every other group they don't fight between those three? But in our group, it's constant infighting because we got this only one can be right. Some people call it the Highlander or the Jesus thing. All I'm saying, and if you as a black man cannot get over this bullshit, or if you're not alpha unless you're a roughneck, get out of here. Get out of here. Because one of the main things we do with ourselves is that we limit ourselves by our image. Just Google search black man. Just take a, just Google search black man. See what pops up. Then Google search white man. Google search Chinese man, his Mexican man, uh, Pakistani man. Just just Google and see what just see what images pop up. Now the funny thing is, back in the fifties and sixties, we embraced all three. We had the rogue. 
the rake and the refine. We had the pretty boy, the bad boy, and the roughneck. We had all of those. But when you allow somebody to take away things and we define ourselves by one thing, they are limiting your power options. That means you can only one run play. And all they got to do is shut that play down. The NFL used to be a running league for the longest until people start learning how to pass and run and then throw passes to to backs coming to to running backs to coming out of the backfield. Now the NFL, well, we went from a running league to the West Coast offense changed the game. So gentlemen, I don't care. If 80% of us are born out of wedlock, I don't care about institutionalized this, this or what, whatever. Every group has its challenges. Prejudice will is a human condition. Some sort of ism is a human condition. The trick is to make yourself powerful enough to where it doesn't affect you. In this country, it starts First, you get the money, then you get the power, then you get the women. And I've already said it in this country, but for us, it has to start here and here. But man, I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe, 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 maybe it still is all the women. And, you know, I can hear it already. You know, it don't matter what we do. The women are still going to be out of control. And, 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 you know, okay. But I would tell you this way. I would rather be on this side fighting that battle than broke. I'd rather be on this side fighting that battle than in a position of powerlessness. I would rather be on this side and it's on a, on a trying something different instead of just throwing your hands up and saying, well, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than all of us. Everything that's ever been done has been bigger than any one man. 